condensed milk, cooking oil, instant noodles, curry paste, cooking sauce, margarine and stock cubes. These everyday food products contain one common ingredient, palm oil. Now where does this palm oil come from? We are going directly to the source to find out more. So today I'm at the Saim Dhabi Plantation at Kerry Island where I'm going to find out all I can know about palm oil. Meet the estate manager of this place, Mr. Taib, who's going to tell me about the processes from the harvesting all the way to the mill. Yeah, welcome to Kerry Island, where's the estate? So we have the male and female flower together in one palm. The bunches that we get is from the female flower. So there's a process of pollination. Pollination is done by 90% by all the insects, we call it. Weevils by crossing over from the the pollen mm -hmm. from the male flower to the female flower, we will have the fully formed bunch, but they still unripe. The, what we want to get a good CPO is the ripe bunch. The time taken from the flower to get this type of bunch is about six months. So we have to make sure we have a fully formed bunch, then we will get a very good bunch, and which we will have very good CPO or we call it OER. OER is the oil extraction rate. Okay. So in our company, we are going for 22%. Okay, this is the cross-section of the, the fruits. Actually, the CPO, we are talking about 21%. 22% is from the meso cup. This is where most of the apple oil we get from the meso cup. And then the, the whitish color here, the kernel, mainly for non-edible products. Like soap detergent. No, there's no bunch here, so we have one ripe bunch here. Mm -hmm. This is okay. how we get the crop from, from the palm. Each of the palm we give the bunches. The best way to tell the worker, when we have loose fruit, at least five loose fruit on the ground, the bunch up there will be ripe. Okay, so once the workers know the fruits are ripe, so how do they actually cut the fruits down? The worker, we have to see, got to remove the front below the bunch. And the front will be stacked and returned to the ground as fertilizer, as compost. During harvesting, workers mark the bunches to ensure they are of good quality. They also collect the loose fruits on the ground to avoid wastage. From here, we'll be loaded into a tan bin and then we'll be pressed to the mill. Next, Mr. Nordin, the meal manager, explains about how the fresh fruit bunches are processed. So the fresh fruit bunch or the FFB from the estate must arrive in the mill within 12 hours. And then the mill have to process it within 24 hours. The first process is the sterilization process because we have to lose the, the loose fruit from the bunches so that it will easily detach. Okay. So after the sterilization process, which will take about one hour to one and a half hours, Okay, depend on the type of sterilizer that we use. And then we have to go to another process which is threshing to thresh the empty bunch and also the loose wood. So the oil we get it from the loose wood. We have to press uh, using a pressing machine to press this loose wood to extract the oil. Okay. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this the oil content about 21 to 22 percent. And they seem to be two layers? Yes. Because uh, at the bottom is the sludge. At the top is the oil. So for the oil to settle, it will take about four hours. And then we extract only the top layer. So we have to remove the dirt. We have a process, we call it oil purifying process. And then after we remove the dirt, we have to remove the moisture. And then we have a, a oil dryer drying machine. Then only we get the final product. From this final product, we send it to our oil refinery, okay. which is our Saim Dhabi Jomalina. The main product from Jomalina is the actually cooking oil. And then from here, if our FFA level, I mean free fatty acid level mm -hmm. is very low, this means the FFA level below 1.2%, okay. we call it premium oil. The second product is our kernel. So the kernel is actually inside this nut. Mm -hmm. Then we go to another process uh, to separate the fiber mm -hmm. and the nut. So this nut, we have to take out the, the kernel inside it. So we have a cracking machine where we crack these nuts. So since this one is a mixer, crack mixture within the kernel and the shell, we have to separate it further into a purely shell mm -hmm. and then another one is the whole kernel. But this is a, a wet kernel. Before we send it to our kernel crushing plant, 
and then we have to dry it so that we can get the dry kernel. The oil content inside the kernel is about 45%. And what about the shells? Are there any uses for it? This uh, fiber and the shell, actually we use it for our boiler fuel because we have to what I call sterilize FFB mm -hmm. by using a steam. Then how we generate the steam? By using our boiler. And then we need this fiber as a fuel. So it's like every part of the fruit has a, its own use? Yes. And then the good thing about the early process is the premium oil. Mm. That is the very good value if we can process early. After understanding about the processes at the mill, it is time for a quick tour around Saim Darby's West Oil Mill. How big is this mill? This mill, the capacity 50 tonne per hour. Oh. We can process 50 tonne of uh, FFB per hour. One day, we can process about 800 to 1,000 tonne. And usually, one load from a truck, how many tons? Uh, one lorry, about uh, 8 tonne inside the bin. So after unloading, what happens to the FFB? From the FFB inside the hopper, we will transfer into the cages. And then where the cages is where the fruit is uh, charged in into sterilizer for sterilization process. Okay, this is where we sterilize our fruit. Okay, we have six sterilizer. One sterilizer can cater for about eight cages. I mean, one cage is about uh, 2.5 ton. From a white helmet to a blue helmet, I was at the plantation and now I'm at the mill. It has definitely been an interesting morning for me as I learned so much more about palm oil than expected. I bet even you know all about it now. Mm -hmm.